hello 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 and welcome back in this video we, we are going to leverage for loops to do something that's very common in uh, software engineering and that is to perform a sort so a lot of times you have arrays or records or whatever you may have and you need to sort them in order to sort them you have to do something uh, to get them in that order Typically, you do it through loops, and there's many different algorithms for for sorting because it is a reoccurring problem. Now, um, most of the time, in most languages, you won't have to implement your own sort, but it's important to understand it so that you can perform it and you can have your data sorted. Because you know, just like for example, anytime you do um, anything with software, for example, even your email, you may want to sort by date, you may want to sort by name, you may want to sort by subject. So sorting becomes something that's very important. And in this in this short series, in this short tutorial, we are going to cover the bubble sort. So the bubble sort is very simple. The way the bubble sort works is something like this. So let's say you have a sequence of numbers, one, Two, four, five, of uh, ten, twenty, four, three, and let's say a hundred in let's just say ten. So you want to be able to sort them in sequence so you would have something like this. One, two, three. Each 
times that the loop we say swap equals zero. We loop through the array. So we are simply going in sequence and we look for anything that that is if it's in the wrong order we swap the values to swap the values we simply have to do this we need a temporary holding place holding place so we call it temp we'll call it temp value or better yet temporary value equals zero and so we can do our if statement and we say if say if these two are not in order we swap them and will that work if you take for example if we were to do this like this we would be comparing one and two they're in order so we move on and we say two and four they're in order so we don't do anything we take and we compare four and five they're in order so we don't swap five and ten they're in order so we don't swap and we take 10 and 20, they're in order, so we don't swap. But here we go, and we have 20 and 4, so the sequence would look something like this. 1 and 2 and 4 and 5 and 10, not 20, 10 and 20 and 4. But here we have an issue because these are out of sequence, so we would swap them. We put 4 here and 20 here. Then we get to the 20 and the 3. So then we would take those and we would swap those. 3 and 20. And then we take the 20 and the 100. They're in order, so we don't swap them. But the 10 and the 100 are out of order, so we swap them. So that's our first iteration. So we do this again. 1 and 2 are okay. So we do that. 10 and 4 are out of sequence, so we swap them. So 4 and 10, we swap. Then we look at 10 and 3 and 3. And 10, we swap them. 10 and 20 are okay. But 10, 20 and 10 are not okay, so we take and... We did something wrong here. 100. So these are out of sequence, so we do 10 and 20. And 20 and 100 are okay. That's our second iteration, so we do it again. 1 is okay, 2 is okay, 4 is okay. 5, it's five and 4 are not okay, so we swap the 4 and the 5. And now we have 4 and the 5. 5 and the 3 are not okay, so we swap them. So it's 3 and the 5. 5 and the 10 are okay. 10 and 10 are okay. 20 is okay, and 100 is okay, and we continue the loop, so now we go again, 1 and 2 are okay, 2 and 4 are okay, 2 and 4 are okay, 4 and 3 are not okay, so we swap them, 5 and 10 are okay, 10 and 10 are okay, 10 and 20 are okay, and 100. And we perform the swap, so we continue once again. 1 and 2, 4, 4 and 3 are not okay, so we swap 3 and 4, so we swap 3 with the 4. 4 and the next 4 are okay. Five, 4 and 5 are okay, 10 is okay, 10 and 10 are okay, 10 and 20 are okay. 20 and 100 are okay. So we continue, and since we swap, we loop again. 1 
and 2 are okay, 3 and 4 are okay, 4 and 5 are okay, 10 and 10 are okay, 10 and 20 are okay, and 100 is okay. Since we didn't swap this time, then we don't, we stop at that point. So we went through this many iterations, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 iterations, and all our numbers are in order. And you can see we have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, so we do have a 3, we have 4, 4, and 5, we do have two fours. we have a 5, we have two tens, a 10 here and a 10 here, and we have 20 and 100, so that completes our sort, so now they're sorted in sequence. And that's essentially what we're going to do down here. So what we do in order to swap them, we take and hold a temporary value for the swap. So we can say 10 equal rates i. And the reason we do that is because <coughs> we are going to be overriding i, so then we would lose the value. So we got to hold it in a temporary location. It's kind of like if you were swapping two balls between your two hands. Now we know we can do that. You would put one ball down on the table, put the, the ball from the left, well, take the ball on your right hand, put it on the table, take the ball on the left hand, put it on your right hand, and then pick up the ball from the table onto your left hand. So that's what we're doing for the swap. So we take temporary value, we assign it to grade I, we take grade I, and we assign it grade I plus one. And then we have to take and put place the temporary value onto grades i plus 1. And place a temporary value there. And that completes our swap. So that's, if we did this correctly, we should see a sorted array. And keep in mind that since it's an array, and arrays are like pointers, so in essence, we're passing by reference when it comes to arrays. So what we do to the array is going to exist after the function returns. So let's take our array and let's just deal with that experiment. And we can simply do it, initialize our array like this. And we can actually take the values that we had originally. this and now we say sort and then we pass the grades and as we did before we get the length of the array and if you remember we do the size of and we do the size of grades divided by the size of the type so we say grade zero but not grade zero but rather size of grade zero so the first element in the array and that gives us our length so we pass our length and to test this we sort of need a way to let's see if we have that right okay so to test this we need something to display our array so one way to do this is we can create a function to display the values in our array so before we even do that and we can do it and we can just loop through them and, and do it but let's, let's just create a function to display them In order to do that, the easiest way to do it would be to simply create a array of characters, and we'll create a 
really large uh, array of characters who will say care, not care, but care. And we'll just call it stir array. And we'll make it something like 255. I think it should hold it. And we'll just say equals and then we'll just initialize it to an empty string. So now in order to do this, well, you know what? We haven't covered this. We haven't covered this. So let's not get into that. Let's, let's, I changed my mind. So instead, let's just display them as they are. So let's just say uh, printf because we haven't covered that. And actually, we don't even have to do that because since we're doing this, we can just say uh, percent D and then comma. And then let's give it a space. And let's do the uh, value of the grades. And that should do it. And just so we can have a return character, let's start off with a return character here. And let's just do a new line. And we can actually say array values, or we can say grade. And that should print our grades in sequence. And let's take a look. And so we have grades. But before we do that, let's go ahead and display our grades before sorting. And we just pass our grades. After we sort them, we display them again. And then let's see if we don't get any errors because we haven't tested our code. So let's go ahead and give it a run. And we have something, and we usually start with the first one. So in function main warning exists element in scalar initializer in grades. Uh, so it's telling us we are. Yes, because I didn't uh, define that it was an array. So let's run again. And now we have another error in function main warning. Implicit declaration of function size. Okay. And this is common. And the reason that I don't take this out, I could easily take it out, but I want you to see the errors as I do it. If you notice, I've done it in, in the past with other ones. Because you will run into this when you write your own code. So you want to make sure that you know how to find it. And the way you do it is it tells you, you go to the first error because usually if you get an error, you're going to get more. But you want to attack the first one first. So in this case, it's telling us line 45. Here's our line 45. It tells us what column. And so we know where to go. So we fix that and try to run it again. And we have something wrong with our sort because we have, we have the sort. And we can see that it, it, it didn't even sort them. And actually, I think we're missing a value here. So there's something obviously wrong here. So, and one of the reasons that it, we don't have that is because we have a bug in our logic because we didn't say swap. So now we have to set the swap value equal to one. And now let's take another run and see how it works. Apparently we have a zero and so let's see. We have one, two, four, five. Now we have zero, one, two, three, four, 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 five, five, ten, ten, twenty. Uh, so we have every value in here except we don't have the one hundred. And so something went wrong with our algorithm. And we can debug this. Uh, there there'd be ways to debug it, so let's say Okay, so here, and one of the things that we have is when we have our loop here, we're going all the way to the end of the array. So when it gets here, it's going to try to swap with i plus 1. Well, if we're already at the end of the array, which would be the last element, because remember it's 1 less than the element, because we start from 0. So what we have to do here is length minus 1. Because 
we increment the one. So this is, at, at the end, this would be our last one. So we don't want to do that. And let's run it again. And there it is. Voila. Simple, easy way to sort your array. And <clears throat> we could actually count the number of swaps. We could actually count the swaps if we wanted to. So we can get some statistics on that. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, uh, I don't mind answering, I don't mind helping uh, one time so you can look at the sword real quick. And you can learn more about it, you can Google the web and find the, the sword algorithm uh, to bubble sword. But there's many other sorts. I'm not sure that we will get deep into algorithms as we go through the series. But it's definitely something that's very important. Software engineering algorithms are very important. How you solve this is a common problem. You can find a solution right off the internet. And so, you know, it's, it's easy enough to find. But just know that most programming languages already have sort, uh, sort functions in their library. So you don't have to do this. You just have to learn how to use that function that's already included in the library game. The C library, the standard C library is no exception. It does have a quick sort in there, so you can do it, and it's actually even more efficient. <clears throat> so thanks for watching. Go ahead and play around with this. Go ahead and play around with the, the sort. Scramble more numbers. See what they return. I challenge you to try to do it off memory. See if you can do it. And, you know, until next time, thanks for watching.